People have been growing this class of plants for a long time in containers and shady gardens. It's the aeroid family, arums, and there are wild ones that we like. Uh, Jack in the pulpit is an arum. Calla lilies are an arum. And what you're looking at is this fabulous group of arums, this whole family that just makes terrific container plants in the summer garden. These are all tropicals and they love our heat, they love our humidity. Most of them are from Southeast Asia, Polynesia. The heat and the, and the hot just doesn't bother them at all. They love our hot summer nights. Great plants. I want to talk to you about, first off, caladiums. Now, we all know caladiums, and people grow, the most commonly grown one is candidum, which is this white with green veins, wildly popular and rightfully so. But I wanted to show you a couple of white forms that you might not be so familiar with that are equally worthy. This one right here is called Aaron, the man's name. And it, you can see it has this big, beautiful leaf. It's got a really particularly nice form, a very fountainy form. And this one, the older it gets and the longer you grow it, the whiter it gets. And the, the veins basically disappear and the, and the leaf turns into this completely snow white, beautiful thing with this little thin green rim. Spectacular plant. This one in the back is an old favorite that just grows like crazy. Look at that plant. This is called Caroline Horton, and or Carolyn, depending on how you pronounce it. Very distinctive, once again. There's no other pink caladium I know that looks exactly like this, with this red veins, green leaf, and then this sort of hot pink marbling all over the leaf. Very distinctive. This is a very vigorous and tall caladium. Another pink one is this one I'm holding up right here. Different leaf pattern on this. This is called FM Joiner. And this is a very beautiful, lower growing, gets a very roundy mound for me in a big pot. These two have been around for a little while, but these are much lower growing and diminutive than the ones I've just shown you. This one's called Gingerland, and it, once again, extremely distinctive leaf on this. This really bright kind of deep jade green, white veins, and then these cool little rose spots just sort of scattered randomly over the leaf. Really nice habit on this, kind of upright but small. And then in this beautiful little blue pot, I've tucked a pot of one called Miss Muffet. This one's been around for a while and once again, unmistakable. These smaller ones often have these scattered spots. And you can see Miss Muffet is this hot chartreuse lime green. Um, and this one is very low and spreading. Maybe gets a foot high for me, but gets very wide. It'll get 18 inches wide over the course of the summer. And it just is a really super decorative plant. I just wanted to show you a few of the cooler varieties that are widely available. These aren't specialty plants. You can get these. Here at Hewitt, we grow tons of these things. I wanted to show you a couple of varieties that the breeders have been busy with just to show you that there are some really wonderful changes coming in elephant ears. Don't go by how big these are now, because these are fairly young plants and they'll get huge. This is one called Hilo Beauty, named after Hawaii. It's a Hawaiian breeder who's putting these out. Beautiful, purpley plum stems. These leaves, I have one of these at home that's older, and the leaf is three feet long and gets darker with age. These, they're very, very, very glossy too. It gets an almost black green. Looks just so great with this hot tropical orange New Guinea impatience and some tender, this is maidenhair fern under there. I just love that kind of combination. And down in front is one called Pineapple Princess. This one is really cool. It's got a completely different kind of a leaf. Instead of it being a glossy leaf like that one, this one is very velvety, almost matte leaf form. They come out, when they come out, you can see they come out kind of purpley, and then they age to this deep, olivey, velvet green, but they retain these blue-purple veins. It's the most unusual thing. Once again, these are great plants in combination pots. This is a terrific coleus called fishnet stockings, which is aptly named, and it mimic, you know, you can see why I put those together because of the mimicking of that veination with the green, and of course the golden lysimachia down below, the creeping jenny. One thing about elephant ear, colocasia, is that they are extremely heavy feeders. Anything that produces leaves three feet long by two feet wide needs a lot of energy. And if you don't feed it enough, give it a lot of nitrogen, it won't perform for you. So don't be shy about fertilizing the, the 
these things like crazy. They really, really, really love a lot of fertilizer. And the more you, it, you can overdo it, of course, but that's hard to do with these things. So don't be shy about giving your elephant ear a lot of food, even if it's just the old fashioned kind. They'll love it. Last group of arums I want to talk about, tropical arums, are closely related. They're called allocasias, and the breeders have been busy here too. This is a huge family with plants that go from pretty small to pretty large. I, well, it's actually a genus, not a family, but once again, that same sort of arrowhead leaf, and I'm going to talk to you from, large, from small to these giants that come out of this. First, I want to talk to you about these little guys. These are mostly from places like Borneo. Isn't that just the coolest thing? This one's called Black Velvet. These great, crisp, sort of cool, icy veins in this very velvety, deep green leaf. This is a little guy, stays small. Another little guy is this one called Cupria, which means copper. This, I just look at the pattern, look at the veination in that. These, this one looks like it's got lacquer sprayed on it. Nobody has put any uh, leaf shine on this. This is just the way the plant looks. Fabulous sort of indented leaves, veins in this leaf that curve down. It's very architectural looking. And then the reverse of this leaf, look at that. That's just awesome. This bright, beautiful plum on this bright green stem. Terrific plant. And once again, it stays small. Another great small one is in this combination planter. This is rugosa, which is also from Borneo. And this has a, rugosa means rough. And this is a, a kind of a rough textured leaf with, it almost looks like a topographic map with the, the pattern of venation on these leaves. Once again, terrific in a combination planter. These are wonderful pot plants. And they, and they can be wintered over as such. Here's another medium-sized one. This one is a hybrid called Louisville. You can see, more once again, these, this leaf type is Sagittate. And this is blooming. Interestingly enough, a lot of these alocasias, when they bloom, they have um, fruity scent. So it's actually a pretty smell that they're putting out into your garden. And now, let's go talk about the really big guys. This is a kind called Polly, and it's a form of Amazonica. This is pretty widely available, and I've seen it under different names, too, called African Mask and things like this. Poly is the most common. You can see, once again, it just works great in a combination pot with that Silver Falls Dichondra and a beautiful Rex Begonia sort of echoing the color combination. This is a really rugged plant and easy to keep. And then we're going to move over to this is what Amazonica looks like when it's not the dwarf form. You can see we're getting into some big country here. This is really a beautiful kind called Watsoniana. And you can see, once again, looks great with the, the New Guinea impatience under it. Now to the super giant guys. This one right here with a sort of, looks like kind of like a philodendron leaf to me. This is called Boa. That's not a philodendron, that's an alocasia. And you can tell with these cool spotty stems that they get, many of these larger alocasia have really interesting patterns on the stem, striped like tigers or spotted. It's really, really interesting stuff. This is called Borneo Giant, and it is a giant. It's, this is just a youngin'. This thing, if you've got the room, this is probably one of the most spectacular summer plants you can grow. These leaves are obviously just getting going. They're huge. Great big leathery dark green. The new ones are very bright green and this kind of shiny. It looks almost like green patent leather. Just a spectacular plant. This is a, as a group, this is a really terrific, impactful family of plants for containers and even in the shade garden. Most of them will take a little morning sun, forget afternoon sun. In our, in our climate, they like a lot of shade, a lot of water but certainly worth growing. Just really spectacular. I mean, these things just make such a statement on a shady patio or a deck. I've got them all over my deck. And it's really a pleasure to go out there and see them. So give them a shot. These are worth plants, really worth growing.